All right, that's enough. That's enough, bro. Told you that Wu Tang is for for the children. That's why it was thirty niggas in there. Y'all ready to jump this shit back off like we had it jumped off? Yes, sir. You ready to jump it off like it need to be jumped off? No, Wait a minute, man. Hold on. Give me my. Sh I'm too anxious. Hold on. <laughs> you know what that fucking bell means? That means the market's open. We can sell things. And Christ, if you black, we gonna keep that shit nice. Yeah. Jingling, jingling. Yeah. Black Market is opening. Welcome back to the 85 South Show slash Black Market slash Black Excellence Spotlight slash Black People Doing Amazing Things. Yeah, we're going to keep saying Black People because I've noticed in my travels and my studies that when you throw the word black on something, they be rubbing motherfuckers the wrong way. They be like, why it has to be black? Why does it have to be black? Why can't it be Afro-American? Afro-American. <laughs> Nigga, we don't have Afros no more. <laughs> what if that was what we took to and we was known for? Just nah, black people just having Afros. I wish y'all were still colored. Yeah, exactly. If we loved our natural hair more, I think we could get back to being Afro-Americans. Either way, bro, we're going to yeah, make it. Yeah, yeah. How you living, G? I'm out here, bro. I see you over here drinking this granddaddy whiskey. Nah, I'm in my hood, bro. Y'all didn't realize y'all was right here. Y'all right here in my hood, bro. That's when you brought out the trap liquor? Nigga, that's how I live. All right, man. Hey, man, I'm sitting here kicking flavor with my neighbor. Apparently, man, this is one of the coldest niggas out here doing this artwork, man. It's like every time I see some of your shit, it's just like you just got these visual-ass jokes that just jump out. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Frico Rico. Frico! Rico. In the building. I don't even want to ask how you got that name. Shit. But I feel like I got to. I got that name. Well, first off, bro, I appreciate y'all having me on, bro. I've been a fan of y'all niggas, been a fan of the whole show. I watch this shit, bro. Word. Because while I be drawing shit, yeah. I, be, I be watching this shit. Titties in the building. Yeah, bro. I watch it. Draw me a building with just titties busting out the window. Oh, I can do that. I think I've done it already. <laughs> For real? I'm back, talking about every window when got back, When Backpage shut titty down, bro. Out. When Backpage shut down, we just started drawing. For selling hoes, I had, I, had, uh, I had titties and ass come out the building. They was leaving. Where the archive yeah. at, man? We need to see all of this shit. It's all, man, real talk. It's all on my Instagram, real talk. Talk right now, yeah. I gotta get a site going. My site I got for sales and shit. People going there. There's a lot of stuff on there. A lot of people can't take all the shit at once, so they gotta right. keep going back, bro. But yeah, but I got my name, bro. I got my name when I was like in middle school, man. I got it. Uh, it was a joke actually. I didn't like it at first mm. because uh, you know back in the day niggas didn't want to say they ate pussy and shit like that. Are oh, you was the first nigga at your school to ate pussy? Pretty much. Bruh, every school hey. got one in there. Hey, I didn't hey. know it was you at your school. Hey, nigga, shouts out, hey, shouts out to Miller Grove Middle, bro. Miller Grove Junior High. Who let you eat that pussy? In Don't say it. She probably in the church now. <laughs> I hope she is, bro. Yeah. Cause I, she was wild, bro. I had, I had did it to the wrong one, so everybody oh, got Oh, you ate hey. freak pussy? Yeah, bro. <laughs> Hey, you lucky to be alive, boy. Hey, bro, hey, that shit made me stronger. I ain't catch COVID once. <laughs> it's because your immune system is used to fuck shit, apparently. Nah, I ain't did that shit in a while, bro. Yeah, what, so I got that name. I mean, I'm, I'm married, bro. So oh, okay. I, you know, you know, I'm married with two kids, bro. I started to do it when I can. But, uh, um, when you can? Yeah, when I can. Because oh. I be in the doghouse sometimes. You have to eat pussy. That's the best way to that's say how you, that's, how you, that's how you get out of it. We ain't even here to talk about all that. Anyway, man. yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We keep going. We, didn't talk, we, we started look, out great. Look, now we eating pussy got, already. I got the name, and then my football coaches, they kind of kept making fun of it, and then people were making fun of it. Um, and I went to like an all black middle school, of course, so it's like. That shit kind of stuck, bro. It's a name, and that's someone that my real name, Richard. And I think it was like two other people who had the same name, so you couldn't call me like, so it was Lil Richard, Big Richard, but it was like, okay, free, oh, you mean Freako. Oh, okay. So that's how that shit happened. Then by the time I got to high school, I kind of like, I kind of liked it, and so I kind of fell into like a role of it. But I wasn't, I still wasn't doing like the wild shit like I was doing. I got a girlfriend and shit. Yeah. But my coaches made fun of it, because they, you know, they was like, who the fuck is Freako Rico? And then, 
So everybody, it just stuck, bro. So by the time I got to college and shit, and then I was out in the streets running around here when I was young, and I was telling people that was my name. Mm. And then, you know, and the old heads was like, nah, we calling you Freako. And that's how it happened, bro. That's what's up. I, just, I, I, I just always love to hear how niggas get their nickname. Yeah, bro. That's a, really a TV show. Nah, I would never do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like how niggas got their nickname? Nah, on a TV show? Yeah. You do it then. I, I'm, I might you do, do it. it. You can do you it. You probably could be on there. How you get your name? I was eating pussy in middle school. Bro, I mean, I ate pussy. <laughs> bro, my whole thing with the eating pussy, it wasn't that I really was eating pussy. I was talking about it. So, you know, how niggas was scared um, to talk about eating pussy. You a trendsetter, bro. I don't think so. I'm just, I'm just a nigga who's honest. Yeah. You know, niggas don't be honest, bro. They just be on some, oh, I ain't do it. They trying to fit in everybody else. I'm like, yo, I don't see nothing wrong with it. My uncle talk about he eat pussy all the time. So it's like, what? what? Uncle's a terrible role model. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought and about it. And my uncle's from Memphis, bro. So oh, it's yeah, like, you know he on board. My bullshit. family's from Memphis, man. So the Memphis people, you know. I'm, shout out to Memphis, man. Yeah, we feel like a lot of people who come through here got Memphis roots, man. Bro, both, both sides of my family. Yeah. This Memphis roots, bro. Man. Like, that shit, that shit deep, bro. Talking crazy shit all the time. <laughs> hey, Carlos Miller here. Christmas time is here. And you still trying to figure out the perfect gift to get your significant other? Nah, get you some Blue Chew so you can give her the gift that she really wants. The gift that keeps on giving. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. The first step is simple. You just visit bluechew.com, then you consult with one of the licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. This is a beautiful thing. So if you can benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we got a special deal for all our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use the promo code BLACK. That's B-L-A-C-K at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code BLACK, B-L-A-C-K, to receive your first month free. Visit Blue Chew for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. How long you been into the artwork, though, man? So I've been doing art, man, my whole life, bro. My mom, my grandmother was an artist, but she didn't do it, like, professionally. She, But she could draw and paint and stuff. Yeah. And so my mom, um, when my grandmother died, she told my mom that I was special and that I probably had the same thing she had. So my mom actually nurtured it. She watched me, she started noticing me, she started giving me paper and crayons and stuff like that. and noticed that I was doing shit. Right. And so um, it's funny because my little boy, my oldest son, he's got the same thing. She's doing the same thing with him. So she nurtured it, bro. Put me in little programs and stuff and got me out of my neighborhood for, during the summers here and there to do things and um, had, me in, had me in a lot of things, bro. And so she nurtured it to me going into college doing it. And, um, and that's what I do now, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I never thought of doing nothing else other than like playing football and stuff. But like, other than that, like, I knew that shit was going in. Um, so I was like, I'm, I'm an artist, you know what I'm saying? Uh, definitely proud of it, man. Definitely proud of it. But it's been, uh, it's been about almost eight years, man. I haven't worked a job, you know Fuck what I'm saying? Job. Fuck a job, bro. I'm a job. I'm the check. I ain't need a job. I'm the shit. Why would I go get a job if I'm in the shit? I've been my damn self, drinking my gin and talking my shit for, for like eight years, bro. Yeah. Doing my thing. Um, and really hadn't had to struggle. I ain't gonna lie. I've been, I've been, I guess my my work ethic from like from I have to say from sports and just being where I'm from and watching people just sit around and do nothing. That just just made me go. And then so being motivated. in the comedy, yeah, because that shit definitely inspires me. Uh, funny shit, you know what I'm saying? And shit that, and, and underworld dark shit, you know what I'm saying? What's some of your favorite pieces that you got out on social media right now? Oh, goddamn. I know your brave shit went crazy. Yeah, it did, bro. I ran into some copyright shit, but it's good now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good now, but my shit went real crazy. Uh, crazy than I thought, bro. Because your shit um, was out before their shit was out. Yeah. I'm fast. That's my whole thing. I'm, I'm all about timing, bro. Yeah. Um, I'm all about, like, like, I don't have no luxuries at home, you know what I'm saying? I have a desk in the corner, and like my kids know when they're going to sleep, I'm staying up, I'm doing things, or I'm back up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. doing stuff. So the luxury is sleeping. Drunk off gin. Y'all get y'all <laughs> ass up. Bro. Let's go. Want to sleep yeah, all my coffee, fucking hey, day. Coffee, water, gin, and juice. And that's it, bro. It's like, hey, I hopped on it, man. Right. So right now, those those definitely my favorite pieces, man. Um, I hate that I had to switch some things up on it, but it worked, man. But other than that, man, I be doing comics, man. I love writing things. I love writing stories and shit. Yeah. So sto the stories and stuff I've seen in the streets and seen in my life, I like I like drawing that motherfucker, bro. So it's like, 
That's just fun. I used to make I used to make fun of more people in, in my my younger years. I stopped doing that. Yeah, we need that satire though, man. Yeah. See, I make fun of shit, but see, I, I, I used to make fun of a lot of rappers, and then like yeah, I had, they uh, sensitive as fuck. Yeah, and I got started getting blocked and shit. I got blocked. I got blocked by uh, I got blocked by Lil B, the rapper. And I wouldn't you talking even, about Lil B, the bass guy? Yeah, he blocked. Me <laughs> you on should be glad. <laughs> yeah. Cause he don't post nothing but dirty feet white women all day. But look, look, I start real. I like, damn, bro, I really gotta stop fucking with people, man. And I never had nobody step to me because I'm big as hell. And then nobody can find my ass either. When they do, they don't want it. You right. know? So it's like, uh, yeah, I just, the satire is my favorite, though. My satirical art. Yeah. Because I do a lot of corporate shit. Like, I'm about to do the Revolt Fest and shit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that stuff ain't really exciting me, bro. It's really when something happens, like the R. Kelly doing yoga shit with his yoga mate. You saw that shit earlier? That shit is, I'm, I'm about to go home and draw that shit. I'm excited to leave here and go home and, and start drawing shit. I like doing the satirical comedy shit, bro. Hell yeah. But I can't do comedy for shit. I can't do stand up. I don't know how the fuck y'all be doing it. <laughs> I tried, bro. I didn't bomb, but like I went too far. And goddamn R. Kelly doing yoga, you nigga stretch out in the pose. Your body's calling. I did, bro. I, was, I don't know what angle I'm gonna take from it. I drew R. Kelly a couple times, bro. And, I, and people were like, you didn't doctor draw him. He's a fucking friend. Coming out of down with dog on a bitch. <laughs> He's no, he's squatting, shitting on a bitch, bro. That's what he's doing, bro. That's how I take it too far. Yeah, I know, man. I take it too far. That's why I can't do comedy. I can't do stand up because the crowd just was like, oh, no, nah, I can take you to some spots where you can get all them shits off. See, yeah, I think, I, yeah, see, Ronnie, you, Ronnie was like, bro, you, you ain't going to the right spots. Bro. You just gotta go where they appreciate shit like that. I be talking wild shit, bro. I'm a wild ass nigga, man. Bro, where can they see some of these sh these uh, pieces at? You definitely can hit me on Instagram. I'm real heavy on Instagram. Um, just Freako Rico, F R E A K O R I C O. Or you can just look up F R K O. That's what I, that's my uh, that's my my artist name and shit. When I do uh, when I show in like uh, contemporary galleries and fine art galleries, I put F R K O. Um, and then you can just Google it, real talk, real talk. Yeah, man, they, I was looking at my side notes. You know, I keep some side notes, bro. This shit say you been working on some shit with Gucci. I worked on shit with Gucci when he when he first came out, right? The last time he came out. Yeah. Um, the first uh, single, other than that first day out one, All My Children, that was the first like that was the record one. label single he, uh, he released. And I did the cover and I did the video. We did like an animated video for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that shit was big, bro, because... Um, How much of a process was it for you to animate a whole video? I didn't animate. I don't animate. I'm an illustrator. It's a big difference. So like, um, I'm going to talk shit, bro. Atlantic Do Records, shit? Atlantic Re Atlantic Records didn't want to pay for um, to get a really high price animator. So the animation real kind of fucked up on it, bro, because they got somebody that was in college out of like UC Berkeley to do it. But shouts out to him, he tried. But they didn't want to pay, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's, it's just what it is, bro. Them record companies are shady as hell. They don't want to pay nobody what they want. They're not, they're not gonna pay nobody. Yeah, they never, bro. Cause not they know people want to be stars real bad. You see, it was this yeah. one lady, they said her contract was so awful. If she drop a song, she gonna have to owe herself some money. That's how it works, bro. That's how it works. So she, you know, that's what that's what I don't really do the record stuff like that. I try to I try to always, I try to stay away from the rapper shit, bro, because the money really ain't there. People think it's there, but it's not there. You really gotta fight for that shit. And by the time you done fighting, that's the work for the money. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but I worked for Atlantic Records for like six years doing stuff with different artists. A lot of stuff never saw the light of day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm gonna tell you something right now. I didn't, I didn't did work for Jeezy and, and Gucci at the same time. Literally, and the Jeezy shit didn't come out yet. But I can say that because I ain't signed no damn NDA. Oh, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. But you know what I'm saying? So it's like I was working on stuff for rapper shit and um, and bidding against it. Like, yo, I'm doing this right here for this much. So that's the business in that shit, man. It's a dirty game. It's, you every know, game you already, dirty. You already know. You already Hell know. yeah, every industry. Man. Yeah, yeah but some, people watching don't know that shit, bro. It's so some it. people who walk dogs every day like, man, you think that shit dirty. <laughs> I'm stepping in shit every day. Man, motherfucker don't have a dog hey. ready when you get there. Okay, hey, bro. I'm, I'm talking to the young illustrators, man. I, like, I'm really about these kids and about these teenagers. A lot of, a lot of them want to do what I'm doing. Yeah. And I was like, hey, man, get yourself, get yourself business, your, your, your business right first, man, before you try to, like, lean on a record company to pay your bills and shit, because they... Sometimes that shit don't drop, bro. They, they don't want to pay you for nothing. Right. And then you got to fight. And that shit might not come for a month or two. So you got to make sure your website is good, your hustles is good on that. Take your commissions. I still take commissions. That's the thing. Like, I still... I'm in the city. I live around the corner. So it's like people running to me. I'm not going to tell them no. Like, hey, oh, I got a mixtape. I want you to do a cover for. All right, I'm going to give you my 
in the city price. I got an in-town price for in-town rappers, in-town comedians that need things, you know what I'm saying? So I do all that shit and stay close to the city, man, until I'm out of here, you know what I mean? Hell yeah. Yeah, bro. So that, Drop the social media again, man, so yeah, they can know that they find you and go hit you and be yeah. like, bro, I got a little mic tape coming at. Nah, don't do that. Actually, that's not yeah. a good idea, because I get that shit every goddamn yeah, day. Yeah, you know, follow, yeah. Just follow me and enjoy the ride, my nigga. Like, just uh, F-R-K-O on, uh, if you just Google that shit, but if you look on Instagram, it's uh, F-R-E-A-K-O. R I C O, and then on um, on Twitter, I'm back on Twitter too because when Instagram went down, I hopped <laughs> on that bitch. I hopped back on there. I had like a six year hiatus. Carlos Miller here. Are your orders to your small business increasing this holiday season? Well, our sponsor, ShipStation, is here to relieve some of the stress of this holiday season. With ShipStation, the hassle of shipping out holiday orders melts away, leaving you with happier customers and more freedom to run your business or enjoy some much needed time off. ShipStation is not only affordable, but it's extremely easy to use. You can get access to discounted rates that are usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. ShipStation works with all major carriers, international and local. We have a special offer for our listeners. Go to ShipStation.com slash excellence to get a 60 day free trial. That's just enough time to handle the holiday rush. That's 60 days free at ShipStation.com slash Excellence. Ship station. Make ship happen. That's kind of clever, ain't it? Make ship happen. I like that. Ship station. Uh, Let me throw this to you. To uh, what would what type of advice would you give to that guy who got a, a folder full of artwork who don't know how to turn it into money quite yet? I would say I don't like telling people this because I don't know who they are personally. I'm an extrovert, me myself. But a lot of people introverts don't like showing their artwork. Um, because I'm so, I'm like this. I like, yo, if you like that too, go ahead and get somebody to either photograph your work or start, or get you a good printer and start scanning your work in if it's small enough for the printer. Or right, so start showing it. And also, if you're gonna do it on Instagram, talk about your work. Just don't post it. Talk about it, because people wanna know backstory. If you don't know how to write, then find somebody who can write for you. There ain't nothing wrong with that, you know what I'm saying? Me, I know how to write. I'm, I'm super educated on shit. And, um, that's my advice to him, bro. Right. But do it at your time, bro. I'm telling people, like, ain't nothing wrong with, I know some, I know some artists that are out here that are awesome, man, and like, you know, they, they waiting tables and doing stuff they don't want to do. And it's like, man, it's gonna come to a point where you're gonna be like, I can't do this shit no more. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and that's when it should kick in and say, all right, I'm gonna start posting my stuff. And I know plenty of artists like that, bro, and they turn their shit, and now they, they like me, they working for themselves. I'm not saying I was the reason, but they definitely said they was inspired by me, and I was inspired by, it just keep going on and on, bro. Hell so it's yeah. like the same thing with comedy and shit. So it's like you keep getting put on or people putting you on something, bro. And uh, you're going to get to a breaking point where you don't want to do this shit no more. You're going to be your own man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's it. Man, I'm fucked with it. Well, anything you want to leave them with? Man, shouts out to all my people I'm working with right now on the art and stuff, man, and all the man, entrepreneurs. Thank you, bro. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. You ain't had to tell them that, but yeah. keep going, bro. No, I'm just I'm just saying, nigga, I'm going to go roll call and shout out every good shout out to New Face. Do your thing. Man. New Face. Hey, shout out to my man Chilio that mentored me since I was 16 years old, bro. Chilio, he in there? Yeah, but not him here. Oh, okay. I Y'all got to get nigga. Chilio in here, too, bro. Shouts out to my wife, Bianca, my kids, bro, Ace and Mac. Hell yeah. Mama, daddy, everybody, bro. Anybody that got me this far in art, bro, like, I really appreciate everybody, bro. Hell yeah, the nigga who sell you this gin. Nigga. <laughs> nah, fuck him, bro, because that nigga, that nigga was trying to overcharge me on, on the liquor store on Metropolitan. Don't fuck with that shit, bro. Right there by the damn Chevron, he be trying See? to overcharge me, bro. Exactly. <laughs> nigga tried to charge me $7 for this shit. I know this shit's $4.95. Damn, they taxing like that? <laughs> he hates niggas, bro, that's why. Damn. He went to the liquor store. He hates niggas. <laughs> Man, that kind of come with the liquor store. <laughs> well, shit, man. Hold yeah, on. Let me ring this bitch again. Yeah. Just to let them know, yeah, you know the black market is over, man. Yeah. 85 South Show Black Excellence, black market. There it is. My man, Freako Rico. There it is. What the fuck is you doing? Stay tuned. <laughs>